True Things, a new film by Harry Woodliffe, who made the brilliant Only You. This is adapted, very loosely adapted from the book True Things About Me by Deborah K. Davis, um, which Ruth Wilson, who's the, um, the lead actor in the film, uh, optioned and developed. She plays Kate. She is a 30-something woman working in a benefits office in Ramsgate. Let that sink in for a moment. She spends her days daydreaming of escape, Googling holidays. She's in danger of losing her job because she's late and she's clearly not engaged with work. Her mum and dad think she's flighty. Her mum says that men find her difficult. And then into the office comes a roguish character played by Tom Burke. Here's a clip. Oh, sorry. Computer's going out. Ah, uh, computer's gone. Um, right. OK, so it usually takes about three to five weeks for a claim to be processed. And if you, you know, don't hear from us within that time, you can just contact us via phone or email. Do you have any other questions? What are you doing for lunch? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I usually just eat a sandwich in the kitchen. They don't give us very long. Sounds worse than prison. <laughs> you want to go out? Sit on a bench? Well, I will keep that in mind. Thank you. All right. The uh, unmistakable voice of Tom Burke, who, of course, was so brilliant in Joanna Hogg's The Souvenir, in which he played Anthony, who was this character that she never really... And his absence was in... His absence souvenir, in... So, yeah, who's, that's right. He exists as an absence in Souvenir Part 2. Um, he seems shifty and unreliable and possibly dangerous... They meet and have an assignation in a car park that becomes unexpectedly erotic. He seems to be toxic, but she is intoxicated by his presence. She saves her name on she saves his name on her phone as Blonde, which is basically how he's known in the thing. And like her, we know very little about him other than the way he makes her feel. But he's completely unreliable. He turns up, he disappears, he reappears, he borrows her car, he disappears with her car, he doesn't come back. And she starts to crave his presence, particularly when he's not there. The film has been described by Harry Whitliffe, who is a brilliant filmmaker, as a cautionary tale about a destructive sexual relationship that is so familiar as to be almost a rite of passage. And she says that it, one of the subjects that it deals with is how um, it's possible for a woman to attempt to, to define her identity through a relationship. And that makes it sound like, OK, it's addressing a particular audience, but I think it works across the board, um, whatever gender, because I think anybody who has ever looked for their own identity in somebody else or anybody who has ever invested their own sense of self in a romance that is not, you know, that is not a, a, a loving, nurturing romance will understand exactly what this is about. Crucially, the central character isn't a victim. She is driven by a passion to, ex to escape from the situation that she's in. And she kind of, she's an, both an agent in and an observer of these chaotic situations that she finds herself in. And I, the, I thought the drama was really terrific, uh, partly because it skates this edge all the way through between okay I can see this I can see the attraction but he's and you know, he's a dangerous character and he's unreliable and he's manipulative and he's you know overpowering but all the way through it you also get the sense that she isn't just out of control and I think that balance is terrific I think Tom Burke incidentally is channeling the spirit of Oscar of um, uh, Oliver Reed I think he has that same sense of danger and also of isolation i think ruth wilson is terrific in the central role because it's such a hard role to get right it's such a hard role to not play as a victim not play as somebody who doesn't have any agency in their life to, you have to play it as i mean an awful lot of why i believe her character is is to do with physicality it's to do with tiny little gestures it's to do with looks and you know the, the way in which stuff is communicated that isn't verbal it's brilliantly shot by Ashley Connor, who does a great job of getting us into the intimate space of the character. He has a terrific score by Alex Baranowski, great needle drops, 
And this, of course, is something that Harry Woodliffe is very, very sort of good with. If you look at Only You and the way in which in Only You they use Elvis Costello's I Want You Here. There's a So when you say needle drop... You I mean, a, you know, a, like a pop record being played, okay. um, as opposed to an original score. Sorry, excuse me for using uh, that jargon. I thought it was really terrific. Um, I know that some people have, you know, have, have found it a, a difficult film to get into because there is underneath it, there's a kind of psychological thriller element. In fact, I think there's almost like a gothic horror thing going on underneath it. But that may be what I'm bringing to the film. And it brings me back, as I've always said, you know, films give you what you bring to them. But I believed in the relationship. I felt unsettled and, uh, and you know, edgy in the way that I think the film wanted to. I think Harry Woodliffe is a terrific filmmaker and I, I liked True Things very much.